2016. And now we're talking to Rick Martinek. He's the senior manager for brand and uh, consumer insights from General Motors with uh, the announcement for uh, uh, something that people have been waiting for a long time, which is uh, uh, the, up, the adaptation of uh, cell phones into the car, more integrated than, than ever, right? Yeah, no, that's exactly what we've done. Um, the announcement we made yesterday, we think, is, is really a huge step forward in you know, the ability to bring your smartphone into the vehicle. If you think about it, globally, there are 2.3 million smartphones out there. And all of us as drivers have noticed uh, on our daily commutes, people using their phones in very inappropriate ways while they're driving, right? So uh, we know people are gonna consist, you know, s still wanna stay connected while they're, while they're on the roads. And what we gotta do is find better, more appropriate ways for them to do that. So what we announced yesterday was for the 2016 model year, Chevrolet is gonna offer both Apple CarPlay and Android Auto compatibility. And that's across the widest range of models in the industry and across the globe. Yeah, so in, in, a, in practical terms, uh, when, when you talk about that, can you explain for the audience what exactly that means and how does it work? I mean, like people come into the car and what happens? Yeah, that's, that's a yeah, great story too because it's really simple and easy to use. What you do is you bring your either your Apple phone or your uh, compatible Android phone into the vehicle. You use a USB cord to plug it in. And then what happens is that the phone, the functionality of what the phone is doing now is locked on the phone itself and you stow that away. And all of and the, the pieces of Apple CarPlay and Android O then come up on your screen in the vehicle. So as you're driving, what you can do is just like today, when you you know look over to quickly change the radio station, you're doing the same thing to interact with music apps, navigation apps, your contact information, those types of things, right? So it enables you to keep your eyes on the road, hands on the wheel. Um, it also limits things. So for example, there won't be video apps that come with this, so you're not yeah. doing something you shouldn't be dealing with it. Uh, as well as for, for many of the functions, there's a voice rec capability. So in those cases, you don't even have to necessarily um, lean over to you and use the screen uh, to do that, but you okay. can get things done via voice rec to work. So uh, does it mean, for example, that uh, I can use uh, my Google Map application from my phone instead of the GPS in a car? Well, yeah. Now, first of all, both of those types of technologies um, are things that consumer wants. No two customers are alike, right? So there are people that will want to come in and they're still going to want to use the, what we'll call built-in navigation that comes with the car. Um, in fact, we see that as that will continue to grow in, in its relevance um, across drivers today. In addition to that, though, there will be people that will want to be able to use things, like you mentioned, like Google Maps or Apple Maps, things that they're already familiar with. And what's, what, what Google and Apple have done here is they're taking technology that people are already familiar with, as you mentioned, like Google Maps, yeah. and then they're customizing that experience for how it works in the car while you're driving. Because it's a little different when you can actually look down at your phone, stare at it, study it, and get the information that you need, where when you're driving in a vehicle, you don't want to interact with that exactly the same way. So they've done a nice job of customizing it. So while you're driving, it's, it's more... Uh, it's a better way to do it than it is um, if it was literally just the exact same app projected yeah. on the screen. Yeah, I know. I, I live here in Miami, and my, Florida is one of the few states that don't have really strict uh, laws uh, prohibiting people to drive in while having the phone in their hands. And I, I, I know it's bad to say it, but I think people are getting better at it because we should have a lot more accidents. Like when you see the percentage yeah. of people driving with the phone in the hand, and I think the only good thing about this is that they drive with the phone in the hand on top of the wheel, not under the between the legs or something looking down. Uh, but this is going to eliminate all that, right? I mean, like you don't really have to have the phone in the hand anymore. Yeah, that's exactly right. You know. People, the thing is, is again, everyone wants to be connected. It's just the way we are nowadays. Um, you're, you're, it's a 24-hour uh, day job to stay in touch with your friends, your family, with work, with everything else, right? It's just a very different world we live in right now. And so what we're trying to do is use simple, easy-to-use technology solutions that, that help people do the right thing. Yeah. So uh, you mentioned that 40, 14 models are going to be available with this technology in next year. Is this uh, an option that people have to pay for? Is it integrated in the car? So how does that work? No, that's, that's the, you know, number one, we know it's something consumers 
consumers really want. And that's why we're offering it across the widest range of vehicles. But no, there's no cost increase to the vehicle itself based on adding this. It's really, we have the MyLink infotainment system that we have in these vehicles. Uh, and what it is, is it's, it's a change to that, to the, to the hardware and the software in the vehicle. Yeah. Uh, which enables this compatibility to, to take place, right? Because it's Apple's technology, it's Google's technology. We're just allowing the capability to work within our vehicle. So it's a, it's a change to what we're putting in, but there's no cost increase to that at all. That's great. So, and it goes from like the, the, the least expensive uh, models like the Spark and all the way to the Suburban, right? Oh, yeah. Goes all the way up through our trucks and uh, through our through our crossover and sports yeah. utilities. But the exactly Spark, right. the Spark already had like some kind of, of of system in which you could like integrate your phone into the the screen, yeah. right? Before having any anything else in it, right? So currently, right now, many of our vehicles do a thing where you can connect via Bluetooth. Okay, but the the ability and the functions are are more limited in what you can do with that. Oh, I okay? see. So yes, there are a few things like music, for example. Okay, but this will actually allow you much more function functionality even when you're looking at music. So, uh, so GM now offers, I guess, like a wide uh, range of options to stay connected because you still have OnStar, you still have like the the 4G LT connectivity in some uh, of the models. So this is like more options like people can really choose what system they can use or there can be all the systems into one car that's exactly right if you think about it and i said this before no two customers are alike right a lot of people want to bring their digital life into the vehicle and they want to bring their their um, vehicle into their digital life right so this just gives people more options uh when you think about the fact that we sell a fifteen thousand dollar spark all the way up to our our suburbans we've got a wide range of buyers that come into our vehicles and they want to operate in the way that they're most comfortable with so some of these technologies like onstar 4 glt are built into the vehicle so it's an easily accessible wi-fi hotspot that they can connect to when they're on the go and they can surf the internet watch movies whatever they want to do while they're well not driving but while they're riding right? yeah exactly in this case it's really just a different kind of connectivity where you're bringing your smartphone into the car and connecting it directly to the vehicle so yes we're offering a wide range of technologies because we know all buyers are different and they all have different ways that they want to they want to interact with that Yeah, that's great. So, uh, within the OnStar system, I know you receive a lot of data about what's going on and accidents and all that. Have you noticed? Has GM noticed like uh, a decrease uh, in in accidents while well, people using more of these hands-free systems to to use the phone in the, the past years? The few. Yeah, you know, I don't know that I have good data on that. I don't know that we have that kind of um, information to even look at. In fact, I'm sure we don't. So I don't know that I have any specific things that I could go into on that. Yeah, but I mean, it's just common sense, right? I mean, if you have both hands free and you're like operating a vehicle, I mean, it's like just like uh, it, 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 that's the right way to do it. And I, and I guess, as you say, everybody wants to stay with the phone on, but this is going to help a lot. So uh, it starts at... Yeah, go ahead. We're, we're hopeful that people will use this technology. It's a better way to do it. Yeah. So it goes into 2016 model uh, cars, but like some of them are already out, right? I mean, like the, we sometimes get like kind of uh, uh, confused about the years in the automotive industry because <laughs> we're... <laughs> we're... Yeah. No, they're not out yet. They're not out yet. It's for the 2016 year models, and they'll start to come out this summer. No, this summer, okay. They'll start to come out this summer. So, no, we haven't launched any of the... We haven't launched any uh, a 2016 that has this capability yet, but it'll start this summer. Okay. So, what had launched What launched this year was the 4, 4G LT connectivity, right? I'm sorry, one more time. I couldn't hear the question. Yeah, the, the, what launched this year was the connectivity with uh, in some models with the 4G LT Wi-Fi hotspot. Yeah, we, that's pretty much every one of our Chevrolet models. In fact, the new one this year, the only one that... Well, the only one that really didn't have it last year was the Chevrolet Traverse, and that's uh, currently expected to start rolling out here in a month or two. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for the information. This is great, and uh, hopefully we'll see less and less people holding the phone while driving, because not only is it distracting for them, but it's distracting, at least for me, because I keep watching around, like, I mean, who I, who I have to take care of. <laughs> one thing that's is to... exactly right. That's what we're hoping, so. Yeah. Thank well, you for the time. I appreciate it. Thank you very much, Rich. Uh, and uh, there's a website or something where people can go and look for more information about this? No, uh, Chevrolet.com. Excellent. Well, thank you very much, and have a great day. Yeah, you too. Este programa fue una producción de National Latino Broadcasting. 